Good morning. Welcome to Market Day Report. And welcome to a Friday. It's a big day as far as the livestock industry goes as we pick up a cattle on feed report at the end of the session today. Actually comes out after we close the markets at 2. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. First off, let's talk corn and the overnight session down three and a quarter on the December 418 and a quarter. While we're still holding 432, 439, 436 range for the March, May, and September contracts. What about soybeans in the overnight session? Soybeans have actually been trending higher this week, up nearly 2.5%, but November giving back some of the gains overnight down four and a quarter, 992. January holding the 10 handle, though, at 10.02 and a half. Now, the wheat market has seen a slight gain for the week, but probably had those erased overnight as December Chicago slipped eight to 573 and a half. Hard red or Kansas City off six and three quarters on the D's at 580 and a quarter. And in Minneapolis, down a nickel, 613 a bushel. Cotton futures have been down over 12% year to date and lower again in the overnight session, 70, 96, down 57. Brian Hoops is president, Midwest Market Solutions. Yesterday, Brian, the, the, really the topic, if you will, our headline yesterday was all about exports. What will our headline be today? Well, we've got a couple of different things that may carve out headlines, Tony. Um, we did have some private export sale announcements again this morning. 116,000 soybeans to China, 136,000 corn to Mexico. So no surprise that we're selling beans to China or corn to Mexico. This is on top of big sales we've seen not only earlier this week, but also last week. And so our weekly export sales next Thursday are going to be massive once again. Now, yesterday we saw a little profit taking coming into that soybean market. You said we've been up all this week and, and uh, we have been. Now, it's important to note that we're in technically in, in downtrending markets in both corn and soybeans, I think anyway, on my charts. And we've done retracements this week. 62% was hit on the corn overnight and yesterday. And we hit just a 38% in soybeans before pulling back yesterday and following through overnight. Now, we may get a little bit of a bounce today off of this export news. And we've you know kind of seen this before where we trade lower overnight. We see export business and so we trade higher. Some algorithm trades come in and, and buy this market. I, I do think with the options expiring today for November, we're going to try and be close to that $10 level as that's where most of the puts and calls will expire worthless. So there's there's a couple different things that, that play in here. And I should point out that uh, South American weather is just nearly ideal. They've had a lot of rain recently to re-establish re um, their soil moistures. Now that it's a little bit dry so they can catch up on their planting, and then there's forecasts for more rain. You really couldn't ask for anything better than that. And soybean meal made new lows for the entire month of October overnight on that news. They're you know anticipating big crops out of South America. Will they'll start exporting a lot of soybean meal? Their number one producer of meal is is Argentina. So um, I think you kind know, of the the script is is out here. Don't get complacent on your marketing. There's considerable downside risk. I think especially in that soy complex. So if that's the headline and the story on the grains. What will the headline and story be for livestock? Well, hang on. We'll come back and find out. Brian Hoops hangs around to join us. Market Day Report continues after this. Welcome back to Market Day Report. We're working our way towards 2 p.m. Central Time. That's when USDA releases their October cattle on feed report. Of course, that's after the close. And speaking of after the close, we don't trade overnight. So how did markets close yesterday? Let's go to the live cattle market. October 189.30, up a buck 67. And this on the heels of cash trade yesterday in the south at 190. We saw 191 in Kansas, 192 in Nebraska, dressed 298 to 302. So 
definitely strengthen the cash market December live at 189 and a quarter up a buck 37. And for the feeders, it was an 82 cent gain on the October 249.40, the November 248.52 up 130. Over on the hog side, hogs just continue to gain up nearly 16 percent year to date, but giving back some of the gains yesterday, December 78.65 down a dollar 52. Let's bring back in Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions. What are you watching? Well, you did mention the cattle uh, trade yesterday. That was very strong. Saw some cash strength, and that gave us a rally in the futures yesterday. Now, I think we could see additional uh, buying interest this morning, maybe push those uh, cattle futures up near the 190 mark where the cash traded. Plus, you have the cattle on feed this afternoon, and that looks to be a friendly report. So I don't know that you're going to see any type of a real big pullback or, or sell-off in this cattle market. The estimates for on feed 99.7, but the placements at 96, that's a very friendly number. Um, it sounds like, according to a lot of the, the feedlots out there, that there's just not that many ready cattle available right now. And that's why we've seen such a surge in the cash markets last couple of weeks, along with the strong uh, packer margins that they have. And then the uh, marketing's effort at 102, that's a pretty decent number as well. So you have you know, a combination of factors in here with the cattle on feed, stronger cash trade that should give us some strength, uh, some follow through buying, I think, uh, today. And um, then we'll go from there. But the hog market may just chop around. We saw profit taking yesterday, cold storage out after the close. And a lot of times the market gets kind of quiet and choppy ahead of that report until it's been released. Well, and we were continuing to see strength in the belly side on the, on the hog. So obviously when you see strength like in bellies or something, that, that can kind of push those prices higher, can it? Yeah, absolutely, you can. You know, this is a strong sign of decent, good demand for the hog market. We've seen that, and that's uh, the one reason why the cash market stayed where it's at, up in that $83, $84 range, according to the Lean Hog Index. And that's kind of a, a target for December to move towards. It was uh, anticipating cash would come down. Cash has not. Cash has stayed steady up in that low one, low 80s area. And so the, the futures market trying to move up near that where that cash market is. All right, Brian, great to see you. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here on Monday. Brian Hoops with Midwest Market Solutions.